Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything. As long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be discussing the sacraments of the Catholic Church. And today we're talking about the Eucharist. What are the main arguments against the Eucharist? Are they strong arguments, and are there any good refutations of them? We've already addressed the issue of why a priest is needed to perform the consecration back in episode 146, and in any case, most of the modern arguments against the Eucharist aren't even about that. Instead, they target the main point of the Eucharistic teaching, trying to question the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. All of the objections that you're about to hear are generally raised from that perspective, trying to disprove the teaching that the Eucharist is really Jesus by appealing to various arguments, sources, and alternative explanations. Objection 1. At the Last Supper, Jesus held the Eucharist in his hands and said, This is my body. How can Jesus hold himself in his own hands? Response. Well, you can grab your thumb in one hand and hold it that way. Remember, the Eucharist is not another Jesus, nor is it a replacement for the body of Jesus that was sitting at table. The presence of Jesus' flesh and blood multiplies in the Eucharist, but Jesus himself does not multiply, in the sense of having more than one body. The changing of the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus is similar, in this sense, to when we consume food and drink, growing a foot taller or a pound heavier in the process. The presence of his body increases, so that the Eucharist is fully his body as well. The main difference between these two things is that Jesus is God, so he isn't composed of parts. Because of this, no form of the Eucharist can be considered part of Jesus. He's fully present in each, because being God, he's not divisible. There are things about God like this which make him different from human beings, but there's nothing incoherent about it. Objection 2. If the Eucharist is the body of Christ, why isn't the body of Christ all used up? Response. Because the Eucharist doesn't represent one part of the body of Jesus, so that if enough parts are separated, it will all be gone. The Eucharist is Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and this is not used up, because God, being infinite, can't ever be exhausted. Objection 3. Why didn't Jesus give his Bread of Life discourse right before the Last Supper? Response. I've heard this used as an actual objection to interpreting John chapter 6 to imply that the Eucharist is his flesh that he was talking about. However, this argument is weak in several ways. First, in John 6, Jesus specifically says that he will give his flesh for the life of the world, and that unless people eat it, they have no life within them. Even if the Last Supper had never existed, we would still need to answer the question of what he meant by this, and in fact, it's a pressing question since our very lives depend on it. To deny this is to say that Jesus was wrong. Secondly, there's a good reason for Jesus to give his Bread of Life discourse before a large crowd, instead of just at the Last Supper, where only his disciples were gathered. Namely, more people heard him say these things when he spoke to the crowd, so his message would travel further. However, most importantly, I would argue that even if Jesus had given his Bread of Life discourse at the Last Supper, it wouldn't have made his claim any stronger. Jesus said at the Last Supper, This is my body. These words are a plain declaration of what something is. Either this statement is true, or it is false. And if it is false, then Jesus spoke of falsehood. Now, some could have argued that Jesus might only have been speaking symbolically, and therefore it wouldn't really be a falsehood, which leads to Objection 4. Objection 4. Couldn't Jesus have meant the Eucharist to be a symbol? Response. No. If Jesus had meant the words, this is my body, in a symbolic way, then all that means is that he gave us a command to eat my flesh, but deprived us of any means of carrying that command out by ascending into heaven. So God would be responsible for depriving mankind of any chance for eternal life, and would therefore be responsible for some evil, and would therefore not be God. In other words, if Jesus didn't mean exactly what he said at the Last Supper, then all of Christianity is false, because the Christian understanding of God falls apart without this. Now, notice that I'm not saying that God has some obligation to bring people to heaven. What I'm saying is that setting an unfulfillable condition for heaven, and then expecting human beings to somehow fulfill it, as Jesus clearly does, or he wouldn't bother issuing the command, is clearly an imperfect act. Objection 5. Not all the church fathers believed in the real presence. For example, 
St. Cyprian denies it when he writes, In which portion we find that the cup which the Lord offered was mixed, and that was wine, which he called his blood. Response. St. Cyprian wrote this in his letter, not to say that the Eucharist is really wine and not Jesus, but to tell people that water is not to be used by itself for the consecration. In fact, the whole letter is about refuting people who had begun to use only water without any wine in consecrating the Eucharist. Notice how he never says that the Eucharist is not Jesus, or is not the body and blood of Christ. In fact, in this very letter, he says that it is, several times, in terms Terms like these, that is, bread and wine, to wit, his body and blood. To draw from this letter the idea that St. Cyprian didn't believe in the real presence is an extravagant assumption. However, even if not everyone believed in the real presence, that doesn't make it any more likely to be false, as the scriptures say. For what if some of them have not believed? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid! But God is true! and every man a liar. Romans 3, 3-4a. Objection 6. The Catholic Church teaches that the bread and wine become Jesus in a process called transubstantiation. However, this understanding is not found in the early Church Fathers, so it must be a later fabrication. Response. The reason why the early Church Fathers don't talk about transubstantiation is that at the time, the word was not in common use, even to people who spoke Greek, the language that originated the term. It was a rather esoteric word, mainly used in complex philosophical circles, and it took a while for the term to work its way into Christian thought. However, the real reason why this objection doesn't work is that it's too demanding. It seems to be implying that in order for the real presence to be correct, the church needs to have understood how it happens from the very beginning, and that seems to me to be quite obviously false. The important point is not whether the church understood the finer explanations of transubstantiation from the very beginning. The point is only, did the church believe that the bread and wine becomes Jesus himself when it's consecrated? Yes or no? Here, the early church fathers are virtually unanimous. You may find one who doesn't specifically say it is Jesus, but you won't find any of them who say that it's not. Next time, what is the sacrament of confirmation? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.